A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of the widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Can you hear me now? <laughs> well, we're going to switch mice. Something must be wrong with this one. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, thank you. Well, I'll carry on because we've got to get to a football game. <laughs> well, some of us. So the prophet comes to the widow and asks for that jar, that last meal. And of course she has given him that last meal. And in response, God provides for her all that she needs. He gives her that endless jar of flour. And as I was telling the kids, if some of you heard it, I would have preferred it just be an endless jar of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> but God provides what we need, not always what we want. Can you hear me now? Are you working? Yes? No? Still not working. None of these mics are working today. Daniel, what's up with that? Okay, well, we'll do it from here then. So essentially, we have these two widows. And it's interesting because in our society, we take care of people. You know, we have survivor's benefits for Social Security. We have pensions that also go to widows and widowers. And of course, we have life insurance policies that people can buy. But in Jesus' time, and in the time of the ancient Hebrews in their scriptures, there was no benefits. A widow was left all to herself. She had no one to take care of her. And then, in that first reading, we, she also has a son. And of course, in the time of Jesus, children were not always well taken care of. They were more of a burden until they could generate a profit. And then when they could work, they were considered an asset. So here we have these widows, two widows, and neither of them really can provide for themselves. And yet, they give from their need. And that's important to understand, that somehow they trust God. Before they give, they trust God. And then they give. And what happens? God rewards them. The woman in the first reading, the widow in the first reading, receives an endless jar of flour, which helps her survive this great famine that's going on in the land. And she's able to feed for herself and feed her child. And of course, we have the widow in the gospel 
where Jesus looks upon her and gives her a blessing, in a sense, that she has given not from her excess, but from her very need. And then we have the scribes. And I think the best way to talk about the scribes is to tell you that they're kind of like a modern-day lawyer. Because in the time of Jesus and the, the Hebrews, Moses' law was what ruled, and they understood the Mosaic law. And so all contracts had to conform with that law. And so they were responsible for making sure all these contracts and various things were written correctly. And that's how they made their money. But as Jesus says in the gospel, they overcharge people, and they have lots of wealth, and they expect to receive all these acolytes. You know, they walk down the street, and they just want people to give them all of their acolytes. They want them to tell them how great they are and hear how wonderful they are. They want to stand and everyone hear them pray, wear the best robes, the best dressed. And yet, they do it not because they love God and want to give back, but because they want people to see it. And that's the difference between the widow and the scribes, isn't it? The widow, she walks in unseen, unnoticed, and really uncared for, and yet gives. And the scribes, they want everyone to see. Now, last week, if it hadn't been All Saints Week, we would have heard Jesus give the scribes a compliment. He would have paid a scribe a great compliment. He comes up to him and he says, teacher, what must I do to find salvation? And they go through this dialogue, and at the end, Jesus says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And yet, in the very next passage, he's criticizing these very scribes because they are making it difficult for the people to understand and follow God. And Jesus wants to make it simple. He's always trying to make things simple for us. And yet somehow we find a way to make it complicated. And the simple fact is, is that God will supply what we need. He will not always give us what we want, but he will give us what we need. And that's important to understand, that God is always there for us. It's not as complicated as people want to make it out to be. If we place our trust in God, he will take care of each and every one of us. And the best example I can give was what I started out with, that idea that God provided that jar of flour to the widow. And I would have preferred a jar of endless cookies. Well, the fact is, is that God will always supply what I need, that flour, but not necessarily what I want, those cookies. And that's the same for us, that if we place our trust in God, he will give us what we need. And so, as we come before the Eucharist and celebrate and receive the Eucharist, let us take a moment to just ask ourselves, what can we give of ourselves? What can we give of ourselves that will help us grow in our relationship to God and serve his people?